Hi, I'm Colin Hung with Healthcare IT Today, and I'm excited to sit down with Frank Harvey, CEO of SureScripts. Frank, welcome to the program. Well, thank you, Colin. I'm so excited to sit down with you as well. I, I love sitting down with SureScripts because you guys have access to the most amazing data, the most interesting statistics, and you actually just recently um, came out with the 2022 National Progress Report, mm -hmm. which is full of lovely information, but one of the pieces that caught my eye was around med rec or medical right. histories. Right. And the number you showed with basically 2.5 billion medication histories were requested through SureScripts, right. almost a 7.5% increase. Uh, to me, that is an encouraging sign because it talks to improving patient safety. Absolutely. Are you encouraged by this growth? And and if you are, like, what is SureScripts doing to encourage even more adoption of this? Well, I can say, first of all, you're exactly right. Medication history is so critical to make sure the right treatment decisions are made for patients. Uh, we're encouraged by the growth, but it should be even more, and it can be even more. Uh, again, there's so many opportunities where better data, more information really helps make patients to the decisions that physicians make uh, and, and pharmacists make just better. And so we're encouraged by the growth, but want to continue to move in that direction. To, to uh, what are we doing to increase the number? Yeah. yeah, we're doing a number of things. Continue to talk to all the health systems out there to make sure that particularly as the care team continues to evolve, uh, that they've got, they understand the value of this, this tool and are utilizing. Is that really the only barrier, just knowledge that this tool exists? Or is there other sort of barriers that you're seeing to the increased use of it? Well, I think uh, I think the knowledge that these tools exist, I think as they become more familiar with SureScripts and what we've done and what we've brought, I mean, again, over 21.7 billion transactions last year, sort of the largest uh, healthcare interoperability in the world coming through the SureScript system and all the patients that we've been able to help. I think, you know, there's over 2 million prescribers that are on the SureScript system. You know, that, that includes physicians and NPs and PAs and residents right. and uh, pharmacists. So again, the, the individuals that we're able to touch and help with the information that we provide are just, uh, it's amazing. Now there was another statistic that I'm a little embarrassed to admit, but it caught my eye because I thought we were sort of at the peak of e-prescribing. I thought like, where was, where else was there to go? Because we've been doing for so long, right. it's been out for so long. And yet the data was showing a 12% increase in e-prescribing year over year. Right. Where is that growth coming from? Is it new docs using it? Is it brand new people? Or is it right. just it, people who just never used it or are coming on board? Well, now? you know, it's a great question. First of all, the pandemic was really, you, you saw a tremendous growth in e-prescribing during mm -hmm. the pandemic. That has continued through with people realizing the importance of it, um, the security of it, uh, the value of it. Uh, so where's it coming from? New residents coming into practice, uh, veterinarians, dentists, new physicians okay. just being exposed to uh, uh, mental health uh, uh, practitioners that haven't used an e-prescribing system before. All of those are adding up. As the care team continues to evolve, as pharmacists become more involved in that first level of primary care, we're gonna to continue to see the number of prescribers and uh, individual practitioners on the system increase. So what I'm hearing is there's still plenty of room to grow. Oh, there's there's <laughs> tons of room to grow. And it's not just the exchange of the e-prescription, the e it's all the clinical data that's exchanged in that as well that, that's really important, continues to grow by magnitudes. Again, well, I gotta go back to the report. I love statistics. As people know watching this, they, they know I love statistics. The report basically was talking about the real-time prescription benefit. Right. And this, to me, has some really great implications because the uses of that means that you're able to decrease the cost of, of, uh, of, of medications for patients. Right. Talk to me a little bit more about that. Well, actually it has several very positive effects. First of all, by the physician having a conversation at the point of prescribing with the patient about what are the best options, both therapeutically and from a financial standpoint, mm -hmm. it ensures that the patient, one, is more able to afford the medications that they get prescribed. It also, by having that conversation there, when the patient goes, for instance, in standard prescriptions, we save $61 on average per standard right. prescription. And specialty, it was $428 per prescription that were saved when physicians were utilizing right. and a therapeutic switch was made. Even more important, it's the phone calls back to the physician that don't happen because the physician confers with the patient right there. So they don't get the callbacks because the patient can't afford the expensive option. Right. Uh, or it's the patient just never picking it up because they call into exactly. the pharmacy, they find out how expensive it is, and they just never go get it. If the physician has that conversation with the patient right there, more likely to get on therapy, fewer abandoned prescriptions, uh, less shock, if you will, at the pharmacy when the patient goes to get their prescription. And ultimately, 
you know, it's better for the patient, right? To be Absolutely. able to go, hey, look, I'm on the medication that is prescribed for me. Absolutely. I'm not going to fall off just because I can't afford right. it. We've had that discussion. Absolutely. So all around, hopefully, a healthier, Absolutely. A healthier community. Well, you know, and it, historically, it's been physicians hasn't been as encouraged or haven't used uh, tools like that, mm -hmm. price transparency tools as much, because I think they didn't necessarily think that it was their job to have those conversations with the patients about cost. Right. Now, they were talking about therapy, but I think they've become more and more aware by having those conversations. It really, it, it's a good thing because it prevents callbacks that tie up their systems and having to reconfer with them to get a different prescription. So I think physicians are really understanding the value of utilizing that tool. Now, Frank, given your unique position in the healthcare ecosystem, you get a chance to talk to and and and, uh, and see a lot of different information and data from a lot of different systems. Right. Are there any particular trends or challenges that you're seeing that you're keeping your eye on? Right. Well, I think there, there are two particular trends that are both concerning and present opportunities. Okay. One, interoperability and the need to get all of the clinical data in the hands of every decision maker in the, the network. That is one trend that you're continuing to see push forward and we're, we're leaders in interoperability. The second is really the changing care team. The fact that by 2030, there's estimate there'll be a shortage somewhere between 100 and 130,000 family care physicians and the need for other healthcare professionals to step up into that gap. So it's our job to help empower with both technology, with reimbursement structures and other things that can help the pharmacist step in and help play a larger role in that. Yeah, and that, that's, a, I was just gonna say, that's a very much untapped uh, resource, the Absolutely. pharmacist, the role they can play, because they've got the presence in the community. That's right. They're at the point of, of talking to the right. patients one-on-one, -on -one, and they probably can answer a lot more questions uh, about those medications and about the care that these people are receiving. Well, and they see the patients a lot more. Critical care patients or chronic care patients see their pharmacists on average of 36 times a year. They'll see their primary care physician four times a year and their specialist nine times a year. These are the most critical patients. Right. They're in the front of those pharmacists so often, the pharmacist can really be a critical part of the, the care team. What exciting stuff is the SureScripts team working on that we can expect from you over the next 12 months? Well, uh, I don't want to steal all my thunder from the hymns that's coming up, so we'll, we'll <laughs> yeah. have some We'll save some of that, okay, exactly. all right. But, uh, you know, we, we continue to focus on doing three things that are we're really a mission driven organization. One is to improve the quality of health care. Uh, the second is to improve patient safety. And the third is to lower the cost of health care. So we're continuing to focus on those missions with our products and services that we bring to market. You know, one area in particular, I'll just give you a little uh, little sneak peek is around okay. specialty products and how expensive they are and what we're doing to help inform the, the providers as both not only on the price standpoint, but the therapeutic options around specialty products. Right, and you were saying that from the report, an average of four hundred plus dollars savings, right. when which, are, which are significant. I mean, that's that a patient choosing between eating or having their medication at, at times like that. So amazing, amazing. Frank, where can people go to find more information about SureScripts? Uh, SureScripts.com. It's the best amazing. place. We've got the information there. We've got an extremely talented team that's that's put the information out there for you. And so, uh, please come by, look at SureScripts.com. Love to work with you and, and again to help us fulfill our mission, which I'm sure is a lot of your mission to improve the quality of care, improve patient safety and to lower the cost of care. Frank, appreciate you being on the program. Loved having you here. Absolutely. Great to be here. Thanks again, Colin. This is Colin Hung with Healthcare IT Today. Thanks for watching and listening.